Good morning. Hey, hi guys. Good morning. Hey, Marco. Yeah, did you submit for KubeCon? Did you finish your profile or not? Oh, okay. Never mind. I just see your messages. <laughs> Hello. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, Mihai's not either not talking or frozen. Can you hear us, Mihai? <laughs> He's just uh, very focused. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, what's your audio off? Oh. All right, let me see whether we got the permissions of the notes fixed now. Yeah, yeah, I think it's all good now. Okay. Um, so, interesting. Uh, I feel like the way they do this is to copy over this part. There's a template yeah. at the bottom. And then, have. yeah. But, yeah. Okay, I'm going to remove the first two rows then. Uh, there's anything we have for data entries on there. Um, okay, I guess we can get started soon. 
Um, so quick reminder, this meeting is being recorded. It's going to be made publicly available. This is um, um, under the Open SSF, and therefore we have a code of conduct. So in general, be nice. Um, and if you want to find out more, you can look at the Open SSF website or the GitHub repository. Um, so also, um, Antitrust policy, we're here to collaborate, not to break any antitrust laws. Uh, if you're curious, again, open SSF website has more of that. Cool. Um, so maybe, um, do you have a topic? Um, oh, we do have a bunch of topics today here. Um, um, so this is the maintainers meeting. Let's go to maintainer stuff, contribute the ladder. Um, I know we have a couple of others on the call as well. Um, I think Marco Rizzi and, and Redden, do you want to just say hi, introduce yourself, um, and then just also if you have anything that um you'd like to you'd like to get out of this meeting or kind of like uh, any topics that you want to discuss everyone um i don't really have anything for the team i'm just here from the pmo team to check if you have anything that you need for the project awesome um, I think Marco, I think most of us have met you. Maybe you haven't met NASA, um, possibly. Um, yeah, we, we never met, but yeah, I'm, I'm Marco from, from Red Hat. I've been working on the end backender. And I think uh, one of the topics I was interested in today, it's already in the agenda, is the, the way towards... Uh, uh, one zero zero basically, uh, because our product is based on uh, work we did uh, months ago, starting from a zero dot three uh, Quark version, which we put a lot of stuff upon, and I think now our plan will be to try to go back to um, use Quark upstream uh, based on the version one zero zero without keep following all the all the pre-final, you know, pre, pre ga versions, basically, but yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that is on the agenda, so. Um, all right, so let's get started then. Um, ben, you have the, the first agenda well, before, topic. Oh, before, sorry. before you start, sorry, sorry. A uh, real quick question to Marco. Like, are there plans to upstream anything from the, the fork you guys have implemented? In yeah, we have been, uh, no, no, that's a, that's a good question because we have been discussing again last week about this. Uh, so we are now, we went out, uh, we have a version 1.0.0 GA out, and today we release 1.0.1, fixing other stuff than Guac. So <laughs> I have other issues all around Guac, basically, that I am fixing on the product that we are releasing. And since Quack is stable for the usage we are doing, we are not that keen, you know, to to change everything. That's why we were waiting for version one zero zero. Consider it a kind of safe point for us to rebase our code because, uh, you know, we took different approaches basically in getting data from the S bomb. Right? We already discussed this stuff when Ken uh, Connor implemented something similar. So we know how to get back uh, to um, have our use cases covered with the upstream model, but we are not there uh, there yet. So we were considering having one zero zero out, a kind of kind of first step to then rebase everything without you know keep changing and maintaining our our fork basically uh, but the idea is to contribute upstream then we created a few new graphical endpoints i know that uh, then rest arrived we already discussed all this stuff so maybe also the api you know uh, 
the type of API will change. So it's kind of re-implementing everything in the end. So the data model is different. Maybe the API type is different. Uh, there's almost nothing but but the but the use case that will that will be the same in the end. Uh, but yeah, that's that's currently the plan. Uh, but uh, really, what is is a stable component uh, currently for us, and we are we are working on on other pieces. So it's very hard to move on work. Awesome. Yeah, I think when we get to that, we can discuss like what the, the feature sets that, that probably would be a good addition. And also, I think you you had some feedback on on the the ingestion um, slash query user experiences, of which could be interesting to talk about in whether it's V1.0 or, or after. Um, but uh, let me, let's go in order. Um, so let's talk uh, contributor letter amendments. Uh, ben, do you want to speak to this? Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to kind of close this out. I had you know drafted this uh, a week and a half or so ago, I guess, at this point. Um, I'm talking about adding ownership areas that are not strictly code um, in order to you know, streamline some of the you know, contributor processes and like grow the contributor community outside of strictly code areas. Um, I don't think there's anything really controversial in here, but it is definitely the sort of thing that like, you know, we do need from a governance standpoint, some uh, explicit approval on uh, in order to move forward. And, um, you know, just between you, me and the recording, you know, part of this is, you know, once we, this is in place, then I can, you know, ask to, Hey, I would like to be an owner for the docs area. And I can start making, especially like some of the trivial, like changing GitHub to have a capital H in it. Um, I don't want, I want to just be able to make that change and not have to, you know, have a, somebody else sit there and, um, come back and fix that for me. So. Um, you know, I think a lot of the sort of the community work that we want to do is built upon this this proposal here. So, okay. So I think in general, the next steps for this is to get maintainers to review, um, and then provide any comments, feedback. If not, that should be good to merge once. So. And what? And mess. I can't type. Is it is is uh anything that like has changed the process? It probably needs to be an N minus one review uh, maintainer approval. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So should we do plus one? I mean, or if we mark or mark approval. Yeah. Um. So I think I believe that the the. So I guess Ben is this. Um. Is this PR kind of? You said do not much. Um. Is this, does this mean that it's, this is just, I know you wrote out a doc and then I asked you to put it in a PR format. Um, would this be the thing that would want, want to be merged in or are you looking to prepare another PR to kind of do that? So I, what we can do for now is I can, we can merge this PR. What I would like to do is actually move a lot of this content out of this file and onto the website, um, just because I think that's where people will actually look um, and then it, then it applies because if right now this is in the the guac um repo so if you're looking in guac analyzer or in governance or something like you don't see any of this um, so i think the website is the appropriate place to document these sorts of things because that's where people will look as opposed to the file um we can merge this for the time being and then it's just more of an administrative thing to move it to the website eventually um so okay. yeah i, I think i'm fine probably... with doing that for now yeah, it'll probably have to live in both places. I think the the GitHub still has to be the source of truth as well. Yeah. Oh, I, um, I, I, what, what I think the the best approach would be, and you know, this might be getting a little ahead of ourselves, but I think you know, having a link to the website with this, um, just because that way, um, you know, the more places, uh, something exists, the more likely it is to diverge, and then we have you know potentially conflicting information. Um, mm -hmm. So I think. Um, you know, things like how to, you know, how to build and stuff like that, or think like things that you're working with when you're in the repo, belong in the repo. But I think something like this, um, the website's a better canonical home for it. Yeah, we, we saw the same thing in like Salsa, 
um, that like we moved most of the canonical representations to the 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 website repo, um, specifically because uh, it became very difficult to keep the the documentation on the website and then the official spec um, in in lockstep. And then it also made it easier for stuff like you can you know print out you can make a PDF out of the 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 stuff uh, on the website a lot easier. Um, I do think that there are certain challenges just around like from a permissioning standpoint, which is just something we have to consider, which is just like, usually the documentation has a lot less, uh, more lax, um, you know, uh, standards around code review and yada yada, where it's like, oh yeah, I'm making, you know, I, I'm changing this to, to uh, I'm changing the case of this word. That usually requires just like a quick, yeah, this seems like you're not, coming in and doing something malicious compared to, hey, um, you know, and we've seen this in other, uh, 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 there's other registry, uh, other repos, like the OCI folks are seeing stuff like somebody comes in to the documentation and removes all the, uh, all, all the um, uh, maintainers and puts themselves as like the core maintainer of, of a project. And it's like, oh, hey, whoa, oh, hold on. Um, yeah, that, that, that was my, yeah. that, that was my main concern as well. Um, but yeah, I think I think this is something that we can work through probably. Um, whether it is yeah. like a folder with particular permissions and co-owners on it, or like some embedded MD file or something like that. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, uh, good practices we can chat offline about it. But I, I've seen a couple of good practices around owners' files in certain like you know, so you still have a governance folder with the canonical markdown. And then that just gets um, transformed into what is going to be on the site. Um, you know, with there also being some open questions about certain things like, like, when do those things go live? Like, does a change to the governance that maybe change, like, oh, this change is going, is becoming active. Yeah, anyway, there, there's, there's a bunch yeah. of uh, interesting challenges there, but we can, we can talk uh, through that offline. Sounds good. I think we have next steps for this. Um, ben, would you agree on just getting us to to approve the or review the yeah. changes? Yeah. Cool. Um, second item is also you, Ben. So I'll let you start the discussion. But I imagine that this will be a, a broader discussion as well. Yeah. So I, I don't know if this is something that's kind of in people's heads and we just need to you know, write it down or if it's something that needs to be discussed uh, among the maintainers. But one of the things I've seen questions about is like, you know, what are the you know steps, you know, what, what do we need to get to, to to declare 1.0 and, you know, even like what's coming in the next release? Are we going to have, you know, multi more point releases before uh, we get to the 1.0? Uh, I know there was an issue from I think last fall that has some stuff. Um, and it's a sort of like checklist item, but I think it would be good from a transparency and also trying to get um, you know more uh, you know new contributor involvement. If we had you know the mile like the GitHub milestones that said here are all the issues that we're targeting for this release. And you know this whether this release is going to be 1.0 and it's coming in a month or two, or it's going to be you know 0 0.9.0 0 or whatever, um, and just sort of like making that a regular, uh, regular thing that we do, so that you know people, you know, one it helps when we're trying to get ready to you know promote what's coming up in the next release or whatever, uh, that information then is discoverable, but it also I think you know makes it easier for um, people who want to contribute, whether individually or on behalf of their employer, uh, can kind of see, all right, what's the next step? Where are we going? Maybe this is a place I can jump in and stuff. Um, do you have a, um, so from, from what I understand, there's two parts of it, right? I think one part of it is just like the 1.0, um, then this part of it, what you're saying, it's like, oh. Uh, we should have or we should start to have a process to kind of maintain kind of like the next versions right and i think um previous discussions you said that okay we do a, a version release every every 
what's it? Do we lend out every a month or every two months? Um, I think the it's... the pull request you merged said two months, um, but yeah. I think it's been about a month from seven to eight. So, but yeah, yeah, it is kind of it's it's a two prong. Like it's you know the general, but also specifically for one point oh because I think that's of interest to a lot of people. Um, and so, you know, if 1.0 is the next release, then it's really a single thing. And if it's 1.0 is still a couple releases away, then it kind of becomes a two-part problem. Jeff? Yeah, I, I think we should separate the discussion between, you know, hey, we need to refresh and, uh, st and hone our um, mild, you know, what we want to do for 1.0 from technically how we're going to communicate that to the community. Um, I don't know that issues on a GitHub milestone is the right way to do but go about that. So do we want to talk about that separately? <laughs> I mean, do we want to work on that work on our list in this meeting? Or do we want to come up with a plan for the coming up with the list? <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, my, my thoughts is that um, well, I, I think this will probably fill up the rest of the time. <laughs> um, so maybe if possible, maybe we get through everything else and then I feel like maybe we can come back to the 1.0, um, discussion on what the people think about. Yeah, I, I think that sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the 1.0 discussion is not going to be something we completely answer uh right now but i think uh i I, I, I do think uh i do think that we need to kind of maybe even get like uh a doc a issue you know i know we have a couple of issues blah, blah blah but like really consolidate around like hey this is what we're gonna um this is the place to put all that stuff and then us to kind of sit down and do that yeah so from my understanding, it's like, oh, let's, let's try and work through to 1.0. And then from that, it's something like backwards. It's like how many minor versions we may have to get to that. Um, OK, so let, let's quickly go through, hopefully quickly go through uh, uh, some of the other items. And then we'll wrap back, we'll wrap back to that. Um, Mike, do you open this one on yep. SHI from GraphQL? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, this is um, not a whole lot to like really. So, so this is something that I came across over the weekend um, based on some conversations with. Uh, so there's to give a little bit of background, right, is, you know, some folks are saying, hey, the GraphQL is kind of um, complicated. And then obviously just in, in uh, a lot of things are based around APIs nowadays. So doing some research over the weekend on um uh, like a combination of like gRPC stuff and and the new like async API stuff and yada yada uh, was running into a lot of like okay are there things that can help um, with uh, helping you either convert between them or support multiple at the same time so that folks who are like oh I have a GraphQL setup so I could just integrate this thing no problem or hey I have uh, I can only support REST APIs or whatever. Um, so I researched uh, uh, async API, um, which is, I think, at this point, a no-go. So async API is at least the intention of it is to be a unified way of handling um, uh, stuff like gRPC, GraphQL, REST, uh, and other asynchronous like event-based APIs. So it's supposed to be a thing that does them all. Um, and I found that it's just, it's not, uh, I don't think it's mature enough for uh, anything we need. Um, but then uh, in addition to that, so anyway, uh, spent a little bit of time just sort of looking at different things here. Cause you know, we've had a few folks ask us like, hey, uh, I don't, I don't want to use GraphQL. I just wish there was a REST API. And so I came across this thing called Sofa, have not used it, have not actually tested any of it out yet. Um, but it seemed interesting cause it just seems like a way to go and take the GraphQL and transform it into a REST API. And so it might just be something that's useful from like, we still want to have the higher level REST API, but for folks who are just like, 
I just don't want to just call the GraphQL. I just want to call it like I could a REST API with these sorts of like, you know, a route that looks like slash foo slash bar slash blah and these, you know, these parameters. Can I do that? And it looks like there's potentially the way to do that. And so uh, it might be something worth time boxing at, at some point. I don't want to necessarily say that anybody should do this right this second. But um, if it is something that, that is interesting uh, to folks, it might be worth uh, taking a look at. Um, questions? Uh, Jeff. Yeah, um, I'll give you, I'll give you a preview. I'm going to have a, the same comment on the next the next topic as well. I think this might be a good thing for a um, like a contrib or um, type of repo. Like, you know, throw create a repo up on Quaxec. Let's generate if if this auto generates something and you can run a binary and it stands it up that serves REST over Quack. Yeah, throw it there and see if anybody wants to play with it. Yeah, yeah that that sounds uh, that sounds like a great um, idea. Yeah, and plus one on that, I think it's like um, it's cool. If people want to play with it. I think my the the main the main concern I have is kind of like a, yeah, if if I don't think we want to support like a one to one rest that rest and GraphQL because then you'd be like not good at either. <laughs> um, yeah. Marco. Um, yeah, I think echoing those, um, I don't, supporting a whole bunch of JavaScript code and adding that all, all to the, um, to the repository might, um, I think that that would need like a lot of justification. Um, and also I think that, like for say any production use case, um, like simple queries on the um, on the ontology API um, might not might not be sufficient. I feel like a lot of these will require some some more complex things that um, say like getting the latest of something, which which isn't really well supported by queries on on the GraphQL. Um, so it'll end up in the higher level risk REST API anyway. Um, but um, but yeah, I, I think that adding it to like a contrib is a good middle ground. Uh, and um, it should be restricted to not to, it should only get only, right? We don't want to be writing to. <laughs> have the ability to the post to or anything like that so that should be another uh, read only kind of thing yeah exactly you don't want people writing to it via the rest okay. well the other thing is if we move it in another repo We'd have to make sure that whenever we generate, we change the API in the main repo, we also update the contrib repo, such that they, the versions are always in sync. It's similar to what we do with the uh, visual, visualizer. Yeah. Well, do we have a, a, a check that does that right now? Okay. Not that I know of. Yeah, we do a bad job on the visualizer. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, basically this will dip like the visualizer, I guess. Um, cool. Um, Mike, since you have the most contact on this, will you be able to create an issue to and kind of, I guess, like based on the con fuzzy consensus here it seems like we all agree like this could be a cool thing when it's not something that we're gonna maintain um as a first class feature oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah i wouldn't yeah i wouldn't consider this to be uh it's more of like um let me put it this way if it takes longer than an hour to set up like to get to the like an initial point where oh it's 
it's wrapping this thing. It's not wrapping it in a good way, but it's wrapping it. Uh, I would say it's not worth our time. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe could could you maybe create an issue and be like, yeah, this would be sure. cool. Um, we decided that if we had to do anything, it would be in like a separate repo, like the graph visualizer. Yep. And then if someone's interested, put a thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. If someone in the community wants to work on that. Um, okay. Sounds uh, like. So sorry. Do we need to set up this contrib repo? beforehand like if someone is interested they say for example like i think they would have no place to work on it so do we need to as an action item i people to have permission to set up that repo i, no? I would say that my my, my take on this is uh, see whether someone's interested and if they're interested then we do it if not um Mihai. uh yeah i was thinking the same like we created the repo when we first need it but uh, the other thing is when we create it we also need to have guidelines on what can get approved, what can get merged, what do we do in case we have some project in there that it gets stale. So we have to set up all of this before we can actually start having the repo up. Yeah. Oh, screen sizes. No. Oh, my dots window froze uh oh you really need a new computer <laughs> i really need it like if i oh god <laughs> what's happening um okay um okay let's Maybe spend another 10 minutes before circling back on that initial issue. We have this one. Yeah, um, so yeah. to give you some background on this, um, so Nathan was working on you know, getting the new, uh, there was a bunch of new features uh, as part of the depth.dev, .dev, the new API, uh, so specifically like you know, batching and you know, querying bulk, all that kind of stuff, which might, which might help us you know, uh, improve our performance at the same time, you know, hit them less hard and all that kind of stuff. We're making so many calls to, to uh, depth.dev and stuff like that. So he was looking into it and he noticed that there was like, there's some issues around with, you know, scorecard is using uh, OSV scanner, which is using the old version of the API. Um, so there was like conflicting uh, you know, uh, requirements and so forth there. So he was suggesting that we and you know this is kind of similar to what you know Jeff was saying. Like we can probably move this into a separate contrib repo, but the scorecard currently we have a scorecard certifier, which is actually not being used. I'm not sure if anybody's using it currently, but you know what we could do is um, move this into that contrib repo, for example, if we need to. And, and so that's still available for use, but you know it's not. It doesn't have to. It's not blocking any of this uh, new new development or any any of that kind of stuff. Um, the other thing is that uh, I think there's a PR that's been open that call that uses a scorecard API instead of calling a scorecard directly. So right now the certifier actually calls scorecard directly, and that's how it's actually um, you know determining the scorecard information for some of these things. Yeah. It is probably more efficient to just call the scorecard API. So there's an open PR for that. So the thing that would be needed is to remove the current functionality and move it somewhere else if you want to. Well, I, I think that's there's a little bit of difference where like I think there is a particular use case that the scorecard certifier is required with private repos. Um, right. Jeff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I do know from experience and other projects as well that in, including scorecard as a library brings in a lot of dependencies, some that we may not be using, you know, a lot that we're probably not using otherwise and as we all know, Go can only resolve to a single dependent, single version of each dependency. So that might be in fact in, in impacting our uh, dependency tree. Um, so I definitely recommend like removing Scorecard as a direct library dependency in Quark, uh, even if it's just the single binary. Like it's still we only have one Go mod file, right? Um, so. It, and yeah, it's uh, so the scorecard API only has public libraries available and only like the top million or something like that. So if you're using a weird library or 
anything private, uh, it's not going to work. If you read the proposal that Nathan has there, it doesn't include the contrib repo stuff. It just says delete the code, which I don't think we should delete the code. I think it, it does have a, a use case. I would just like to find a way. I think it's a good, I think this is a good impetus to like somehow get the scorecard uh, library dependency as a library outside, out of our guac main go mod file. So if that means a contrib repo that we actually build the scorecard certifier there, that's great. Or some, or some other way, like we could shell out to scorecard. Um, I don't know, but uh, I don't, I don't want to just delete it. I think it has a use, even if it's not part of our current compose file. Um, but I do, th I do think this is a good idea to try to pull out. Um, I just wanted to add, um, we're getting a lot of our scorecard information from devs.dev, but devs.dev actually has it you know, for some of these. I'm not sure if it's for everything, right? Again, I haven't seen exactly what they have the same offers, thing that the, that the API has. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then never mind. <laughs> Pretty sure. Okay, so maybe that's comment on this issue to be like um this Does anybody on the call have experience using like subdirectories with separate Go mods that can have different versions of things? <laughs> I was going to ask about that because I, I've seen it around. Uh, oh, I think my hand was still raised. Sorry, that was, that was from last time. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know if that if we we want we agree with moving to a separate repo or if we want to try to get it in the current repo, or if we want to do shelling out like all those options, potentially doable. Um, but this is if we do want to have this contrib repo, which seems to keep coming up, like this seems like a, a reasonable thing to start it off with. Yeah, I, I think also I think especially that like the core the core deployment doesn't depend on this, so it's it's this this would be a good thing, right? I think I think if we had it like as part of like whether this is like the collect sub or the depth or depth thing, then maybe we may still want to keep it within the repo. But yeah, I agree that this is seems like a a good fit for country. So we would move the whole scorecard certifier, both the API side and the library side to contrib and have it do try API first. And then if not, then run, run the scorecard actual action itself. Okay. Um, Cool. Deletion on notes discussion. Half, do you want to have this discussion now? Um, okay. Oh, can you give us at least like a brief overview of like what, what you had in mind? Oh, yeah. So, um, this again is a low, lower priority. If there's nothing else to discuss, I was going to bring it up, but we can discuss the 1.0 stuff instead. But, but main thing was like, you know, just, just thinking about um, the OSV certifier, right? So, let's say for running, you know, we want to be, it's constantly going to keep, keep creating um, certified vuln nodes. Let's say based on like, hey, I want to, I want to recheck the package every day for mm -hmm. new vulnerabilities, for example, right? That's going to keep creating new because we don't, we don't overwrite, right? It's, uh, we always create new. 
So in that case, it's, you know, it might pile up a lot of, a lot of unnecessary notes might start piling up. So I was thinking like, do we want to start doing a POC in terms of like, Hey, deleting OS, you know, the certify vol node kind of thing, just, just as a starting point. Uh, that was, that was just the, that was where the whole context of this was. But again, it's not important at this point. Uh, just that's, that's the background around it. Yeah. Let's move this topic. Um, to the next meeting. Uh, Jeff? Yeah, so not related to the deletion, but like, shouldn't the certifier not create new nodes if the current latest node is, is the same as what it would be creating? Like, uh, if there's no changes in the attached vulnerability or its description or whatever, why doesn't it just get sorry, the latest it needs one? To create it needs to create a timestamp of like when it got last checked, right? So it, the certified poem as a timestamp saying like, Hey, I checked yeah. it this time. It will create a new note for that. Do we need That's that? Problem. Then? Well, I, I think uh, the, so, the question is like, you wouldn't be able to tell whether it was scanned recently. Right. Right. Exactly. Okay. But maybe that's that a different, maybe we need a different solution to that. Yeah. 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 yeah so, I mean, it, it could be something else, right? So, okay. Okay. Um, let's, let's keep that for next time. Um, let's go back to the 1.0 discussion. Uh, and this is, da -da -da. I think we wrote this down the last time as a, a kind of guideline. Um, but I think we have a lot more context and some of these things have already been done. Right. Um, uh, um I guess how do we want to do this? My my thought is to maybe just like talk around these broad topics and then see what people have input on. It's just like general brainstorming. Um and then maybe next time we can we can go through like more concrete like what are the issues, um, what are the action items needed. Okay. Um so let's talk about API stability. Let me just copy this into the, the notes. Probably easier. Um, so at least on the high level, do we have API stability, at least one recommend the business optimized backend, um, upgrade to path 2.0 when it's out. I, oh, upgrade, upgrade path, upgrade path 2.0 when it's out. Um, ingesters for documents. Um, solving that issues, set of use cases satisfied. Um, at the high level, do we think that everything's captured by Watson? Watson here. I think we talked about this already, but um, adding the missing queries to the <clears throat> the um, GraphQL. Um, client. Which okay, course? so that would be API, and I I would say yeah. That would... Um, there's Which some. Course? Yeah. There's some uh, some queries that that aren't on the on the client uh, code generation. So like um, know, something random like I don't know, querying some of the the less used nodes. Um, maybe like. It, is dependencies probably there, but they are. I think we put them all in now. Of my head. On the client side, you mean? Yeah. Oh, we did that on the. I I made a PR last. Oh, week. you you did that. Okay, nice. Yeah, that's already merged. Yeah, so all, all everything that's both paginated and non paginated queries are both all everything is all there now. Awesome. So that that's, that's all done. Um. 
I, th I think, I mean, in terms of like the use cases, again, I don't know if this is something that we want to do for 1.0, but like, you know, the whole cons whole idea around people are like, oh, right, you know, GraphQL is hard to use. I don't know if we want to expose the more REST API query, simple ones that are more, it's like, hey, you know, give us, give me all the vulnerabilities, give me this, or makes makes it easier for people to query stuff. Not Not like super complex queries, but like simple queries, but. That's just the thought here. Yeah, I think that's a good that's a good point around the UX. So, um, I added that. Uh, Andre. Yeah, I still think this is a good list. Uh, I think API stability clearly is like the <laughs> the elephant in the room. Um, you know, we just realized not that long ago that we needed we paginated everything, and that was a big big change. And it's and that probably came in within the last three months. I'm pretty sure. Um, this deletion stuff that Parth is talking about, that's being been asked about by a number of, of users, uh, saying like, Hey, you know, if I, we're going to need to delete some stuff out of this thing at some point <laughs> after it's a certain age. So I think that rolls, falls under the API stability as well. Yeah. I think that that is also a, a broader category of like. So I think the concern is a group, right? Is that okay? Um, does that come from a place of cost or from a place of like it's getting slower as, as the days go by? The the size. Yeah, I think like it's it's a concern of like oh we got to delete some stuff. Is that more from like oh we will? I don't know. Change. I'm just repeating what I've heard. Okay. When people come to a community meeting and say like, "Hey, we, how do we delete stuff?" <laughs> you know. Yeah. So some like for example, you know, some of the some of the uh, other active yeah. users right have commented saying, like, "Oh, I, I accidentally put a misinformation in, right? Wrong information or the wrong wrong salsa in, for example. I, like, I want to go delete that because it's not accurate. <laughs> There's no way of removing inaccurate data." Yeah. Okay, so two use cases. One of them is actually removing falsehoods. Um, although, I, I, if I channel my inner Santiago, I think he would say that you know he, that <laughs> that in itself is like a, a, a statement about the supply chain. Um, but. Um, so I started putting information in that needs to be deleted, and the other one is kind of like um, showing off predicates over time, which is kind of the OSV to define you know, type thing. Well, I mean, um, people are just saying like I do daily builds, you know, ten builds a day. I do an S bomb for every build. At some point, I want to delete those old ones and keep like one a week, one from each week, or one from each month, or something like that. Okay. Yeah, I think one of the things that's probably worthwhile to, um, especially on that particular one re regarding a retention policy, is to also understand from folks how are they currently archiving some of that data? Because like first in with the with certain growing regulations, like there is also I, I agree that it shouldn't exist in Guac, but I also want to make sure that the folks who are doing this, like, do they understand that like hey, you might be called on, um, you know, what was the history of your builds over the past year um, in the future? And, and I'm curious, like, I don't think that belongs in Guac, just to be clear. I think, like, if you say, hey, great, we need to, you know, if it's like a bank retention policy of, like, seven years or something for all the data in Guac, it's just, it's going to make it useless. But but having that um, still uh, uh, there is, is I think, going to be, like, having something is going to be important um important there part so uh, i do i mean you know i think now that we have the blob store and stuff like that again we can't if we delete the node we have no record of where that document is so i think there has to be you know like hey, at the same time it moves it to like a you know some other storage device or something but anyways like if that audit does come around uh what's stopping them from like just re-ingesting that old data into guac All right just re-ingest that old S bomb that's sitting there in in their you know S three bucket or whatever it is. Yes. So 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 by that I just want to understand the use case of somebody who's like, hey, are you 
are you what are you doing from a retention policy standpoint of all the data there right like are you also saying hey i don't need this s-bomb anymore um because i think it just helps us better understand you know what are folks using it for and then also understand like with upcoming laws and regulations around this like once again we, we've made it very clear that guac is not the canonical store for the original documents right um so so um so i think that two seems to be like this retention policy comes out two different camps one of it is like a data compliant policy the other one of it is like ease of use performance like growth concerns right it's like more technical versus more policy um it sounds like at least from a data and compliance policy side um I don't think this is this is the key motivator. The mo key mo the the motivator is more on the the like the the use um, the user experience and the the growth. Um, okay, maybe let's jump to, to the back end. Um, I know we say at least one supporter recommended, but this is back end optimized. Um, I want to say we have that today, right? Yeah. I would say so. Cool. Um, Let's skip the upgrade path to 2.0 first. Um, in just as... So we solved the NATS issue, right? Get yeah. the blob on now. This is done. Mm -hmm. uh, and then... It was either or. So I'm not sure what the first point was. I don't... I, I, that's, I don't know if anybody has recollection of what that meant. I think we, we had this list of things as like, we like, maybe we do one of them. Maybe we went to the other one just from a time perspective, I think. So is this done then, I guess, like, uh, do we need the first point then that test suite for X generate from Y? So I think the, the, the question for this wasn't, uh, well, the context around it, if it is, if I recall, it was like, oh, we're going to generate, uh, we say like we support SPDX documents, we support cycle DX documents, but we also want to say like, oh, we support like, like SIFT SPDX, like from, from which tools. Um, and I think that was kind of more the question, right? It's like, do we, do we want to make that distinction? Um, like, how confident are we to say, like, oh, we're using the SPDX document? Like, we have it tested with output, uh, output document from these tools. Um, then again, I, I I don't know whether that's a. That seems to be like a lot of work as well. <laughs> Uh, is a lot of work, but I think that sort of thing is something that I would almost throw back to the community a little bit. Ask them like, hey, what tools are folks using? Because I think like, once again, if, if folks can kind of say, like, uh, to some extent, right, people are going to come to us and say, it doesn't work with this SBOM. Um, and then we go back and say, great, that's now a test case. Or we go back and say, this is not an S bomb, which is like you know, uh, you know, we're running through a lot of the 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 a lot of the cases we've run into, right? It's not been an S bomb or not a valid S bomb or a broken S bomb or something. Um, but but I do think, um, like the core bit of it here, right, is 
we support the specs. We support how the specs are mostly being used, but but there's definitely cases where, um, and I guess actually uh, to throw it back actually as a question to you, in a lot of the cases where we've run into issues, is it because we're not interpreting the document right or because the tool is doing something a little strange or a third one which is the spec is not clearly defined enough to be um uh to allow us to like be unambiguous in how we interpret it right because we found i think that third case a couple yeah. of times of as well of like well, technically, the spec allows for you to do both of these things, but they get interpreted differently. My gut feel from the issues that I've seen is to is more to ensure. Um, being like the tools may not do the right things. Oh, uh, tree, the spec is ambiguous, and sometimes tree causes like the tools to implement it to not do the right things. Um. And I think I would add a number four, which is just like, oh, there's just like a lack of information in where the tool is running and therefore it doesn't generate anything that's like actually useful. Yeah, I mean, there was a one use case with the, the Cyclone DXS bomb that didn't contain, you know, the top level component at all. But it didn't map it to anything. So it's like, <laughs> I think it was part of the spec. I think it's valid, right? But it's like, but what, how does that even help you at that point? Like, what is Squawk going to like Guac can't do anything with that information. So I wonder whether the the question here. So so it sounds like I like the community aspect that Mike mentioned around like, oh, you know, the community should help with with oh we tested it with this, it works. Um uh, and so as Mike said, you know, we can say we support these specs. Um and my, I'm wondering whether we can just have a page or be like, um, here's the tools that we've tried it with. And then um, in a way, it's like a, it's more like a adopters, adopters um, uh, file, which like then the S1 producer that wants to be on this file can say like, oh, I'm going to run the S1 I produce and run them to Quark. And if it's fine, then I can add myself to this list. So almost having like a blessed list of, of, of tools blessed in a very, very, very good sense. I think the part of the question, oh, sorry, uh, NASA. Uh, Darcy, you're on mute. Yes, you're on mute. Uh, while he's going off, can, can you guys hear me now? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I lost the window where I see you guys. But anyway, um, uh, so yeah, I just wanted to uh, bring up one point which was not uh, discussed, I think, for 1.0. Milestones, which is, I think there exists some internal forks of people who are using uh, Quark uh, in some organizations and like, uh, I assume or hope uh, a large scale, like a lot of S bombs and stuff. And uh, I think it might be nice to know what are the most important uh, things in those forks that is not actually in the repo right now and just, you know, try to see if they make sense to put in there. That was my only thought. Just want to mention before the meeting ended. Yeah, uh, that's a good point, and I think this uh, Marco Rizzi. Um, I know we're we're almost out of time, but I think maybe next time, if we have a list, it's like Red Hat Spock on, on, um, features that that you're looking for one point oh. I think we should add it to this, or we should kind of discuss where it goes into this list. Awesome. Thanks, Marco.
Um, we're out of time. So, um, looks like we have still quite a lot to discuss next week, yeah. which is always a good thing. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, cool. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.